we've discretized the Laplace equation, and we get this equation for phi on this two-dimensional grid, 4 times phi i j minus phi plus 1 j minus phi i minus 1 j minus phi i j plus 1 minus phi i j minus 1 equals 0. Here is a schematic of our grid, the x direction being the i index, the y direction being the j index. Um, the point is, in this first part of solving the Laplace equation, I want to um, construct a direct method of solution. That means writing this equation as a matrix equation. A times some column vector is equal to some right-hand side, and then solve it directly using uh, the matrix algebra tools of uh, MATLAB. Um, but to do that, we need to write phi as a column vector. Right now, phi is, in some sense, a matrix because it has values on a two-dimensional grid, but we want phi to be a column vector. The way to order the values of phi so that it becomes a column vector is called natural ordering. What we do is we go across i, starting at the bottom at j equals 1, we go across i, from 1, 2 to nx, and then that becomes our first um, elements of the vector. So we have our phi then will be a column vector, and we start with the value at 1, 1. So um, x equals 1, i equals 1, j equals 1, then i equals 2, j equals 1 and go all the way down to the last value here uh, at nx. So let me do that. Phi of nx1. And then we go to the second row here, starting from the bottom going up. So the second one here will be phi of 1, 2, and then keep going. Okay. So we're ordering phi in a column vector uh, going across the x direction and then going back to the beginning um, and then going across the x direction again, okay? <clears throat> One big column vector. So we need to convert this uh, ij coordinate to a single coordinate k and what is the relationship then? k is going to be i, where you are in the x direction, plus j minus 1 times nx. So if you're in the second row here, j will be 2, and then to i you add nx, because you've already gone through nx values of i. So we convert the discrete Laplace equation with two indices to a discrete Laplace equation with um, one index. So that will become 4 times phi sub k. So ij goes to k. And then minus phi k plus 1 here, minus phi k minus 1 from the third term minus then i uh, j plus 1. So we're jumping rows here. So that would be minus phi um, k i is, is, uh, will be k plus nx, jumping one row up, minus phi k minus nx, jumping one row down, equals 0. Okay, So that's a little bit of um, figuring out. We're converting a two-dimensional index then to a one-dimensional index. And then phi then forms the elements of a column vector. From here then we can read a matrix equation. The matrix 
will have uh, 4 going down the diagonals, minus 1 and minus 1, 1 above and 1 below the diagonal, and then a jump uh, in diagonal elements where we also have minus 1s. So we'll see what that looks like in the next video. On top of that, we have to worry about the boundary conditions. So what do the boundary conditions look like? So for certain values of i and j then are going to be given to us as boundary conditions. So I can write down in i and j, it's easy to write. So the um, bottom, I'll call that b, the bottom here corresponds to all the values where j equals 1, right? The left side, the left boundary here, uh, corresponds to all the values where i equals 1, right? The left side here. The top boundary condition here corresponds to all the values where j equals ny. And the right boundary condition, this side here, corresponds to all the values where i equals nx. Okay? That's very easy to do in the ij grid. Then you need to translate that to the k grid. Translate to k, um, when you're going horizontally, they're all connected, so it's fine. But when you're going vertically, you keep jumping by nx values. Okay, So this is in my lecture notes, and you can have a look at it there. So let me summarize the point of natural ordering. We have the Laplace equation on a two-dimensional grid but if we want to solve this as a matrix equation, we have to put the unknowns phi in a column vector. We're going to be solving a times phi equals b, a right-hand side. The column vector then has to be an ordering of the values of phi on this grid. Natural ordering starts at the bottom, goes from left to right, and then works its way up. So the first row left to right, the second row left to right, the third row left to right, and we stack all those values in a column vector. <clears throat> this is the conversion here from ij to k. And then we have to worry about the boundary conditions. These are the boundary conditions in the ij uh, coordinate system, but in the k coordinate system you have to do a little jujitsu to rewrite this in terms of k. I have that in my lecture notes. In the next video, then, we'll put this all together, and I'll show you what the matrix looks like. I'm Jeff Chasnov. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.